Sabrina, Sabrina Artel. Welcome to Trailer Talk. Trailer Talk happens in my 1965 Beeline Travel Trailer. We go to main streets and events, big conversations from a little trailer from my neighborhood to yours. Come on in. Yes. Where do we begin? Let's first, um, I, I've admired your work as an actor and a performer. Uh, you're a theater person. Uh, it'd be wonderful to combine, actually. I'd like to combine that, you as an artist, with you as a resident, as a neighbor of mine here in Sullivan County, and what the connections are for you between these parts of your lives and why you've decided to take a stand. I was a very poor actor. I only had uh, I had a five thousand dollar savings. I was living out of a out of a uh, out of a suitcase, um, going from one little theater to another in New York. And um, I came up here, and I saw three places, and uh, I bought the second place I saw. <laughs> I saw three places, <laughs> yeah. and I bought the first, <laughs> right. and it was sixteen years ago. Okay, there you go. So it's very similar. <laughs> yeah. We came up here and we really fell in love with the place. And uh, we fell in love with it because it's um, it's just a, a really clean, um, unspoiled, uh, affordable. So you get a, a very real kind of person here. Yeah. And this isn't the Hamptons and it isn't Rhinebeck. And... and um, and we really liked that about it. We really liked how how humble it was, and because of that hum, humble, you know, humbleness and humility that the place had, uh, was a came a real um, love for purely the land and yeah. our resources and just the the beauty of looking out on a on a gorgeous expanse that has wasn't uh, soiled by too much tampering over the hundred and so years that this has been a place to be. And so um, that was something we really loved and, and uh, we tried to get up here as much as we could. It was our, it, what we called our home essentially as we wandered and around. And home is something I've been thinking about so much and what does that mean for us to have a place that we can call home? And with this natural gas drilling that's come into our neighborhood there's this possibility of a loss of it, of a displacement, of a distortion mm -hmm. of it. The gas drilling um, is not only not only going to make the place ugly, it's not only has the potential of poisoning the water and uh, the air, but it also has a real potential of destroying this community. Um, it's a community that um, transcends, I think, political boundaries. It, it's a community that, uh, honestly, you know, Sunrise, my wife broke her leg in October last year, and the outpouring from neighbors with food, and, you know, people we barely knew came to help with the kids, and that is, that's, that's a rare thing. And uh, this gas drilling, I could see it already, is what happens with most booms or bought booms and busts is um, a small percentage of the people end up uh, getting wealthy at the expense of a greater percentage. Is it for me? Uh, yeah, have a sip of some Dimmick <laughs> water and look. Beautiful. So you collected this water in Dimmick, Pennsylvania. That's right. And it ended up in my hands thanks yes. to Victoria Lesser. Thank yes. you, Victoria. Uh, I was in Dimmick in the winter time mm -hmm. and was devastated by the people I spoke to, what I saw, what I heard. Mm -hmm. uh, seeing something like that in operation is so different than what the imagination, I think, can even do. Everywhere that th this has been has been disastrous for the towns, for the people who have experienced it. I've been to Dimmick myself. It's so outrageous and criminal what's happened yeah. to these people. They can't drink their water. And these are people who leased, who these chose are these to are lease people, their land. These are people who leased openly. They bought the whole yeah. line. This is going to change your life. You're going to make a lot of money. Yeah. And now yeah. they wish they had never heard of hydraulic fracturing and drilling. And they're still making money from it. 
And as you drive around there, you just see the it, all the these the roads have been widened. Um, you see these these white like hilltops cut trucks off. Yes, white company everywhere. trucks trucks going back of and all forth sizes. constantly, constantly, twenty four seven. Helicopters. And helicopters, right? and then the light the light pollution. The way mm -hmm. they light the drill rigs up, it's it's literally like a stadium at night. And uh, and I go there, and these people are so desperate to have somebody intercede on their behalf because there's nobody to take care of them. What about the farmers, right? Yes. Because the farmers seem to be caught in a way, right? They're being used by all of us, aren't they? Yes, in, in they're a caught sense. in the middle. But yep. they're caught in the middle. And uh, so, and I know that you're surrounded, aren't you, in your yeah. community by farmland and farmers. Yes. yes. So how are you navigating the conversation? What do you think are the most pressing issues? Um, to me I think I think I think a real problem and why this is, is such a big deal is that these farmers can't support themselves anymore. Yeah. By farming. So they're sitting on hundred and fifty acres that can't that they have to pay for, that they have to maintain yeah. and uh, that they have mortgages on. And they can't afford it. And all of a sudden, someone's coming around and offering them a thousand dollars an acre, money that they've never seen in their lives. And I think they're put in a position to, you know, they've been pushed down for so long; to, to, they have to take it. Right. It looks like a, a safety net for them. What is that? One second. Uh, oh, something in there. Okay. Uh, as true. long as the camera's going, we're good. I don't right. know what that means. So, <laughs> yeah. so yeah. let's hope that we'll know if the power goes off. What it means. I didn't think it should be the burden of any individual to have to make a choice that yes. can so adversely yes. impact everyone around them. Yes, that's why I, I, I you know, I, I don't want to go to my, I don't want to give my neighbors a hard time about this. You know, I, right. I, I hear their argument and I understand yeah. it, but this is a public safety issue, and um, I. I'm all for somebody, you know, doing what they want and on their land and, and, and having the life that they dream of having, just not at the expense of m my family and, and the folks around us. You know, I've been going to the government, I've been going to the people who regulate this thing. You know, it's, it's not up to the farmers, ultimately. Exactly. And it's a really cynical thing for the gas companies to do, to come in here and start leasing land, even before they have permits to do it. This is some of the best farmland in the United States. Yeah. We, what we have that the East Coast I and mean, the West Coast doesn't have the, and the Plains don't have is water. We water. have an abundance of water. 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 You've never tasted water like this water either. The cat skills water, I know. And I know. it is precious and it's a resource Absolutely. that we can't mess with. There is a serious water scarcity problem that we're talking about in the United States in the next 20 years. Absolutely. We are already seeing it worldwide. Completely. And, and so we're sitting, you know, the greatest irony is our, one of our greatest resources here is water, and it's the very thing that we're, we need to poison, you know, use to poison.